The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Saturday morning. I'm Andy Brownell, and I'm with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Good morning, Robin. Good morning. Coming to you from Wabasha today because we're in the midst of grumpy old Mondays. Oh, that's right. That is, uh, yeah. It start, actually started yesterday, and yesterday felt, I mean, it was nice, but it still felt a little bit like winter. Today, I think it's going to be a lot nicer. Our ice fishing contest is going to be more like a dock fishing contest. I was going to ask. And, <laughs> no, I wouldn't be going out on the ice. And um, we've got a, a fun event. Some of our kids are in it, so I'm looking forward to it. A bush light curling event. So the way it's supposed to work, you're supposed to put these 30 packs of bush light in those aluminum lasagna pans like you buy at Sam's Club. And okay. then push them across the ice. But because there's no ice, they ordered the chamber or these little flat um scooter type things with wheels under them so they'll set the 30 packs on those i think things are going to be going all over the place they'll be in yep. different lanes it should be fun though um our daughter and a couple of her friends are one team and our son-in-law and a couple of his friends are another team so it'll be fun to watch and i'm going to help score so doing a little bit of work showing a house after the sh- radio show and then going down and having some fun so oh, that's hard so, to believe that, that movie was that movie was made in what the mid nineteen eighties? Oh gosh, it's been a while. Yeah. So they, yeah, this thing has been going on forever. The yeah, and they have festival. they have some free showings of the movie at the Eagle Center today. So well, each year they just keep adding more and more fun stuff. So if you're listening after you become well educated on what's going on in the real estate market, then I would suggest if you had nothing better to do, take a drive over to Wabasha today and enjoy Grumpy Old Mondays. Oh, it's gonna be a I'm just imagining a little bit uh, sentimental for you because your dad was yeah. uh, a very much a Walter Matthau looking guy. Yeah. yeah. Remember last year at Grumpy Old Men Days, I put the plaid hat on him and posted the picture on Facebook. Yeah. And, I mean, he is, he was my favorite. I always tell everybody he was my most favorite grumpy old man, grumpy on the outside, tender hearted guy. But anyway, yeah, first will be our first year without him and mom. So it's, it's sad. But it's life, right? Yes, you can't stop it from happening. No, unfortunately. And That's speaking right. of life, a lot of folks, part of their life goal is to own a house. And, you know, um, the good news is that dream of home ownership is still alive amongst the younger people. So I'm super excited to know that and the statistics show that um, nearly half of the prospective millennial buyers said they'd be willing to buy a home as soon as the mortgage rates um, start to drop, right? So they say drop below 7%. So that's already happened compared with just um, 19% of Gen Xers and 7% of Boomers. So the millennials are the least worried about the actual interest rate and they're the most um, in tune to taking on that challenge. And I think it's because they think more the way I think where I say, you're not going to live there 30 years and pay that house off. Okay. You're not. So instead of being so ultra focused on what the purchase price is and what the interest rate is, let's be ultra focused on what your monthly payment is going to be. And does that fit your budget? Because that group is moving and shaking. So they're going to live here for a while and then they're going to move and they might move to one coast or the other. They might move a couple blocks or a couple miles, but they're not staying put very long on average five to seven years. And they're the generation that right now has the little kids. Yep. So they're busy and expanding and doing all that kind of family stuff and having that home is so important to that. And they're just willing to think outside the box. You know, I was at a listing appointment earlier this week and a young family, um, small children, and the husband actually took a job outside of the country. And so the wife said, when school is out, we're going to move. And I said, oh, are you going to move there? 
And she said, oh, no, no, we're going to move back to the state, go back to California, where I originally came from, where I'll have the support of my family, because my husband, even if we moved there, he travels a lot with this job. So he took just like a two or three year assignment, and they're just willing to make it happen. And with FaceTime and, you know, cell phones and all of that, it's just a lot easier. I can remember when I went to college, I couldn't even call home. (laughs) <laughs> because they because the it's long I mean, distance. I was five minutes away and but it was long distance and it was crazy expensive so i mean all of that has definitely helped people be able to really get creative with the way they live their lives but you think about it, that the, the millennial generation never knew what long distance calls were about or very few heck of them no but. heck no they're like what do you mean <laughs> What do you mean you couldn't call home? What does that even mean? I can call the Pakistan for free. Exactly. And they can see each other's faces and, you know, all of that. So it's great. Like the Jetsons. Like the Jetsons. Do you you remember watching it when they could bring your face up on? And I'm thinking, that is so cool. Maybe someday we'll actually be able to do that. Well, here we are. It did happen. Well, with the millennials and seeing as... They are, you know, right now the home buying generation. Right. Um, are, have you seen or talked about any any of the features or amenities or things that they really want in a home? Um, you know, it's interesting because everybody definitely wants something different. But some things that I see are a major priority now are home office because so many people work yep. from home, right? And People are like to be outside. So I'm hearing a lot of, as long as, you know why? I think it's because they love their pets. So I hear a lot of, I need a fenced backyard or I need a big backyard. And whether it's for their dog or their kids, people want a little bit of their own space. So those are, those are things that are really popular. Um, kind of funny because I went through a phase where people wouldn't even look at a house if it didn't have a three car garage. And now I'm hearing people say, oh, we only have one car. So I think <laughs> it's fine with us. So it is it is funny. You watch the different, you know, fads and trends come and go. And people love walkability. It used to be like, I don't want to walk to any place. Now it's like, if I could walk to the grocery store, to a local restaurant, to work, you know, that would be ideal. So, yeah, it's interesting and fun. It makes it good because there's something out there for everybody. And yes. That's what makes it all work, right? And we couldn't be in a more exciting time here in Rochester because we're watching this place grow like before our eyes. And when you get on the, you know, you go on the Internet and you look at everything that the mail has platted and and planned for the future, it's like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy stuff. Even when you drive downtown and see buildings that you haven't seen before, it's like, when did this pop up? And, I know. And it's, it's it's amazing. So we live in an area where there's going to be constant growth, you know, for the next very many years, I believe, and lots of new people coming. I've heard, I don't know if you've heard any any um, rumors, but there's a big plat of land that's sold out by Menards on the north side of town, and um, it's going to be some kind of a company. It was It was a a big price tag. I mean, I know for a fact that the land sold, and I know that it sold for a big price tag, so it's got to be some sort of a big company. The only rumor I've heard is um, an Amazon, uh, what do you call it, um, where they package up their stuff. Uh, oh, really? A distribution yeah. center? Distribution center, yeah. I've heard possibly oh, an oh, Amazon oh. distribution center. Now, I don't know if there's any truth to that, and I'm not trying to spread rumors, but something is definitely coming to that um, space. So we'll have to keep our ears open, figure out what that's going to be, and so we can tell everybody when we know the facts. Yeah, wow, you got me uh, rubbed up here. That is very interesting. Yeah, something, something's coming. Well, it makes sense, but yeah. yeah. Well, and with businesses comes more people, and you know, it's like one of those deals, like which comes first, right? And so it just, that growth just continues. Out where our REMAX office is, it's very similar, very close to where our Coldwell Banker office was when I worked um, at Coldwell Banker. Right. On the side of the um, Circle Drive from Costco. Yes. Circle Drive, I call it other things. I call it 
Realtor Road and Bankers Boulevard. Yes, so so down the, the street, there's nothing but banks and real estate companies. But anyway, um, this place when when our Coldwell Banker office was out here, it was like the middle of a cornfield, and it wasn't that long ago, maybe less than twenty years, probably. Oh yeah. And I, how long do you think we've had Costco? 15? Oh goodness. Gosh, I, you know that is that's, that's that way of, yonder on the north side of town for me. So yeah, well, when Costco came, then it blew up. You know, so this this segment of town out there is really a happening place. Everything, I mean, Rochester I call is it, going leaps and bounds. I call it Little Apple Valley. Yeah, good. That's a good description. <laughs> yes. sure. It reminds me of describing yeah. when I go up there. It reminds me that I, it's almost yeah. as if I am in that suburb or one of those suburbs. Robin, we have to take a break already. Okay. All right. We'll do that in return in just a moment with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96. Story. To Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back, everybody. Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group, Remax Results with us, of course, Saturday morning. And... Robin, we were talking about all the growth here in the city of Rochester before we took the break. And I know on Monday, the Rochester City Council will be talking about the you know, affordable housing issue and what government can do to influence it. And I saw, I can't remember the exact number uh, of how far behind we are as a city Oh, to yeah. have enough housing for the people who will be coming into the community over the next 10 years. But yeah. it, it's crazy how much it's crazy. And people has to be built. People, if they're not in the real estate world and it's not, you know, what's front and center in their brain, they have no idea because it looks like if you look around, it's like, gosh, there's houses being built. There's apartments coming up right and left. So it looks like who's going to live here? But it's actually quite the opposite. It's like, where are people going to live? We are growing. We are growing. And, you know, we're finally starting to hear, I'm so excited, positive things in the news about the real estate market. Not always accurate, but I heard one um, reporter the other night say, after two years of a slump in the real estate market, we're finally seeing an uptick. And I'm thinking, two years of a slump? Where have you been? You know, it's like, (laughs) my gosh. But so, you know. Yes, last year was a slower year than the year before. And that was a slower year than the year before because we went through that craziness with COVID and it pushed the interest rates down to pretty much free money. So, of course, everybody bought a house. And if they didn't buy a house, they refinanced the house they had. So everybody's got these great low interest rates locked in. So now when they see interest rates that are 6%, it's like, oh, gosh, can I – give up my 2.5 and go to six. So that's what has slowed things down. Finally, people have started to say, you know what? I've outgrown this house. 6% isn't that bad. Um, I'm figuring out that rates are going to drop. Everybody's saying it. People are predicting by the end of 2024, it'll be closer to mid fives. Boy, it's time to just make the move. And so people are moving and we are getting more and more inventory. Don't get me wrong. We still don't have any surplus by any means. Um, we're sitting at about uh, one one and a half months of absorption rate. So in other words, if nothing came on the market in six weeks, we'd be out of houses to sell. So we definitely need listings. And when we get the listings, they're selling. In the last six months, the average house, I mean, 720, something like that, houses have sold in the last six months. And on average, it only took 18 days. So there is nothing wrong with this real estate market, people. It is a very good real estate market. It is a great time to sell a house. It is a great time to buy a house. So I'm glad that finally what I'm hearing on the news is existing sales are up. You know, (laughs) home sales are up. The building is starting to pick up. Um, Things, prices are going up. So that's why when people say, why is now? a good time to buy. Why wouldn't I wait until the rates go down? It's a simple answer. It's because 
you can wait until the rates go down, but at the same time, the prices are going up and more and more buyers are coming into the market. So the chances of fighting over those houses and getting into multiple offers just increases. Um, I read something yesterday that said up in the Twin Cities market, they're back to 30% of buyers um, buying without uh, inspection. Oh, 30%. really? Wow. Yep, up in the cities. Now, I'm still, I've still been writing, I'm going to say 97% of my offers are still contingent upon inspections, okay? So most people are still writing them here. Sure, if we're into multiple offer situations, that might be the first thing that they do to entice, you know, to make their offer better. But it's not as it's not as common here yet as it is in the city. So their market must be just even a little bit a little bit more competitive, more multiple offers up there. When you mentioned the absorption rate, it reminded me that when you and I started doing this program prior to the pandemic, obviously. The absorption rate was running around two to two and a half months. Right. And hey, when, that I, was, when I was selling real estate, it was like six months. So, yeah, yeah, and that was in a very, very strong real estate market. And right. I remember you commenting that that's that's getting, you know, <laughs> really low. It's, uh, you know, it, should, it shouldn't be that low. That's way too low. And now we're at an even lower amount. And, uh, yeah. So I, I imagine if you drew a, a line graph, if you went back 10 years and drew a line graph, it would just sl- show this nice, slow, steady rise until you got to the pandemic, and there would be this just huge spike. Exactly. And then it exactly. comes down back to the levels it was before the pandemic, but a little bit higher and continuing exactly. upward trend. Ever since I've been in real estate, 24 years, I've always been able to very confidently tell people the home prices in Rochester and surrounding areas, you know, they're going to vary neighborhood to neighborhood, house type to house type, price range to price range. But in general, they're going up from three to five percent very consistently year over year over year. Then we got to that COVID and it's like up 10 percent, up 15 (laughs) percent. I mean, some markets across the country up 33%, up 35% year over year. I mean, it, it just went nuts. It went crazy. So then when things started to calm back down and now we're at probably like averaging up 5%, maybe 5 to 7% year over year, again, depending on which house type, which price range, which neighborhood, but 5 to 7% seems like Oh my gosh, prices are dropping. Well, they're not dropping. They're just not going up by double digits. They're right. not spiking. So it's just back to prices have not dropped. Not even in 2009 and 10 when the market was crappy. I mean, some people had their um, tax valuation lowered because they were saying, I can't sell my house for this. Well, they couldn't sell their house for that because the economy was horrible. Nobody could buy a house. So it didn't mean that the house was, the value went down. It just meant that it wasn't the time to buy houses, right? So when things picked up again, they didn't start 20 or 30 or 50,000 behind. They started where they were. It's just that things stayed really flat for a while and started to increase very slowly. And then we finally moved fast forward to the pandemic and then, whoosh, like you said, spike up. And now we're just back into a calm, steady. But we don't see anything other than every year, values are just going to continue to go up. We don't see, oh, when are the prices going to start coming down? That's not in anybody's forecast. Especially in this neck of the woods. Exactly. That's what I'm only speaking to this neck of the woods right now. I'm saying our market with the growth we have going on, and the things we have going on, I do not see values in our area dropping. Not in my tenure as a real. I mean, I'll be long gone and retired before that ever happens, if that ever happens. <laughs> I don't know, and I don't know what will happen to cause it, but I hope I'm not around to see. Right. It if that if that does happen, things drastic. something. Yeah, something really bad happened. Something All right. really bad happened. We have to take another break, Robin. We will right. return in just a few moments with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Here at News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. 
We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96. May apply. To Rochester Real Estate with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're chatting with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, of course. Our traditional Saturday morning checkup on the Rochester area. That's all of southeastern Minnesota, the real estate market. You said something right before the break when you said values, home values going up 5 to 7% annually. Year over year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? If you were in a bond market, you would be pleased as all get out to lock in at a 7% bond rate. And then on top of that, I'm using. You're living in it. This <laughs> is the it. bank account that you're living in. I mean, I don't think people, well, I know a lot of people do understand, but some people don't understand just how valuable your real estate becomes to you later in life when it's time to, you know, um, like, what am I going to live on? Sure, I have my retirement, my pension, my Social Security, whatever I'm going to get, but my my biggest chunk of money is going to come from the real estate that I've owned and paid off. And a lot of people, it's not just the house they live in. You know, they've picked up a rental along the way or a vacation home in another state or, or whatever house for their kids or house for their parents. So sometimes people own multiple real estate because they realize that it's a great investment. It's an absolutely great investment. And you mentioned those investment properties if you can hold on to those properties after retirement, you're just they're already paid for. You're pulling everything That's off as income. income. Exactly. You're so smart. You're so smart. It's time for you to buy another investment. I know. Property. I thought of that. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my eyes open. All right. <laughs> so I want to tell you, uh, a few months back, I talked about Brian Buffini making a forecast about how much home sales were going to jump and how interest rates were going to drop. And he was like quite a bit bolder than most predictions. And so when I found this article, it made me smile because it says expert home price forecasts for 2024 have been revised up. So a lot of these people who made forecasts about how much prices were going to go up have now, um, because of the data, because of the market signals and because of the confidence that they're gaining, they've reforecasted. So originally, Goldman Sachs thought that home prices were going to go up by 1.9%. Now, this is across the country. Right. Okay. And they've changed their forecast to 5%. And Mortgage Bankers Association originally said 1.1%. They've changed their forecast to 5.1%. Zillow had originally said 0.2%. They've changed their forecast to 3.9%. Fannie Mae had originally said 2.8%. They've changed their forecast to 3.8%. I think you get what I'm saying here. I do. Um, National Association of Realtors originally said 0.7%. They're still conservative, but they're saying 2.9%. So everybody is seeing it. The writing is on the wall. The prices are going up. Uh, just like the mortgage rates are going down. So it's good news for the market across the country. But because of those other factors that we discussed earlier, it's really good news for our local market. I mean, this is going to be a very solid real estate market for many years to come. So we have for nothing sure. to complain about. And homeowners have a lot of um, wealth to gain, for sure. Yeah, you look back at the... The folks who made their money in the 60s when the farm, you know, the city was farmland like Apache Mall. Yeah, right. And those opportunities exist today again because of the growth we're going to be seeing. Exactly. I Only these farmers are selling for a lot more money than those farmers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of, I, I did find an interesting article. If I have a couple of minutes, I want to touch on it. Okay. Um, so not only is home ownership surging, but it's actually surging in minority groups, which is so important because there has been such huge disparities for so many years. And I think, like, I know that the Asian homeownership is up by something like 63%. 
and wow. reaching an all, re, reaching an all-time high of 63%. And Hispanic home ownership is reaching an all-time high of 51%. And I'll tell you, they talked in the same article about families pooling their money and doing like generational living. And it's funny because if you think about who you know and what you know about the Asian community and the Hispanic community, these are people who take family to the next level and they, they don't put their parents in the nursing home. They take care of them, right? Or they help their siblings take care of small children. So that multi-generational living has really been a positive thing for some of the um, minority groups of people and their level of home ownership. So that's, it's really exciting. I love it. Unfortunately, there's still a huge disparity with black home ownership and making small, um, you know, making a small improvement, but not, not much at all. Yeah, that would be really wonderful to see that turnaround. That's for sure. All right. Um, so one, what I do have one second to say something. Of course. Re, Remax lost, not lost as in died, but um, our CEO, Nick Bailey, is leaving Remax. And it's such a sad day because he is an amazing guy. And I don't know what's behind it because, you know, we never get the full story. But I read something in Inman saying that, you know, numbers were down for the sixth consecutive um, quarter. And I thought, you cannot tell me that a company would blame the CEO in real estate when we all know that it's been inventory and interest right. rates. But I hope he's got something bigger and better planned. And we have Amy Lessinger, who has been working with the company for 26 years, started as an agent, who's going to be stepping into his spot. I'm sure she'll do great. But boy, oh boy, I'm going to miss Nick. He, he was a fabulous leader at the top. All right, Robin, all the things we have talked about for the past half hour hopefully have uh, raised interest in either buying or selling homes. So how, do, how does somebody get a hold of you if they want to take advantage of this growing market? Yes, please call me. I'd love to help you. My cell phone number is 507-259-4926. And if I'm available, I will answer. If I'm not Leave me a message and I will call you back because I would love to talk to you and love to help you with all your real estate needs. Because you'll be busy judging events at Grumpy Old Men Days. But I'll have my phone. You know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have fun this weekend. We'll talk to you next Saturday. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results here at News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.